Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Today I wanted to talk about food storage with you. What are the longest lasting foods and how can you find the foods that you choose to eat on an everyday basis and turn those into foods that you can also store for long term food storage. The longest lasting foods are single ingredient dry food options with very little fat. Fats in foods go rancid. When you combine ingredients, the shelf life is shortened to the food that will expire or go out of date the soonest. If you combine uh, foods with fat in them, with foods that are very dry, that have a 30 year shelf life, they're all mixed in together. Then the item that, the food that would expire the earliest determines when all of the combination ingredients would then no longer be safe or good to eat. While it's great to have a lot of food in your pantry, foods that you're rotating and eating on an everyday basis that have a combination of ingredients in them, if you want foods to last in your long-term food storage, you need to find as close to single ingredient food items as possible. The less fat in foods, the longer it lasts, and if it can be dry, then it's going to last the longest. Let's go over a few of the choices for short-term and long-term food storage and see how you can make it work for you. Maybe you like to eat cereal. Cereal goes stale. The ingredients don't last. So if you store a single ingredient cereal like oatmeal in an airtight container, it can last for up to 30 years. Go ahead and store some cereal for your everyday use have several boxes of it on hand for several months. It's not going to last nearly as long as oatmeal that's been sealed for long-term food storage. What about crackers? We love to eat crackers, but we know that even without opening them, they can become stale and they can get an off flavor because they have fat in them. So it's great to have things like Ritz crackers, club crackers, wheat thins, triscuits, it's also important to look at crackers that don't have the fat in them, like pilot bread. Pilot bread and saltines have none of the fat in them, and so they're gonna last a long time. Pilot bread is practically indestructible, and it lasts nearly forever. Nearly every home in Alaska has a stockpile of pilot bread because it doesn't spoil, and you can top it with all kinds of things to use it in place of things like bread or crackers. Another food would be lentils. Lentils are packed with protein. They can last for years in their dried state. Maybe you want packets of ready to eat meals that have lentils already prepared in them. These are gonna last a year or two, but they're a great option for everyday meals, even for your bug out bag. But for your long-term food storage, choose the dried lentils in the single ingredient bag. Split peas are the same thing. They last for years in their dried state, but maybe you want to have a can of split pea soup in your pantry for a quick and easy meal. So for long term, have some dried peas. For everyday short term food storage, have a can of soup. Pasta lasts nearly forever. I've eaten pasta that I had had on hand in my food storage for 15 years. It tasted just as great as when I bought it but you have to repackage it into an airtight container. You don't want it laying out in its cellophane wrappers or cardboard boxes because it be can become infested with things, items could get spilled on it, and it's just not a food storage safe container. So repackage your pasta and it'll last for nearly forever. What about pasta mixes like pasta ronings, macaroni and cheese, foods like that? They are a combination food, and so while the actual pasta, macaroni, or noodles in it will last a long, long time, the flavor packets don't. They're only going to last for a few years, and they will last several years past their expiration date if you try to help extend the life a little. I like to empty the packages of things like pasta, roni, macaroni, and cheese into a Ziploc bag. I store them in a wide mouth canning jar and it prolongs the life because it's keeping out the air. But you still need to rotate them within a certain amount of time because the little packets, the flavor packets and cheese packets, have oils in them and they can become rancid and no longer taste good or not safe to eat. But that doesn't mean that the pasta itself. 
So if you do open a package of something like macaroni and cheese or pasta, uh, hamburger helper, and you don't think that the flavor pack's okay, you can trust that probably the noodles are fine and use them for something else. Rice is the same way as pasta. Rice can last for decades, but if you buy a ready-made package mix like a rice aroni or a nor mix, one of the pre-made rice and bean packets, they're not going to last as long, but you can help prolong the life expectancy of those packaged meals. I like to pour them into a Ziploc bag and store the bags in a canning jar. I don't just pour them all in together because I like that it's already a pre-measured uh, packet. I can pull it out. I know how much I need. It's ready to go. I just don't have the box anymore. A lot of those box meals, the noodles and rice are just in a cardboard box. That is no way to keep your food long term. So put it into an airtight container somewhere to keep something from chewing on it, for bugs to infest it, or for the things to just become stale. The next long lasting food is beans. Beans can last for decades if you store them in a food safe container and remove the oxygen. When we want to eat beans, we don't necessarily want to start by soaking and cooking dried beans. So it's great to have canned beans on hand. You can open them up, add them to all kinds of different recipes to make complete meals in a jiffy. Know that one pound of beans is equal to about three cans of beans. So that will give you an idea of how much food you actually have in your dried bean stockpile. Have an assortment of different kinds of beans and different meals that are pre-packaged, ready, shelf-stable meals that you can open and eat that contain beans. And those are great to have quick meals for emergencies or just busy days in your everyday prepper pantry. Syrup is another food that we like to have on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, pancake syrups, flavored syrups, those have a combination of ingredients in them and they don't last forever. Whereas maple syrup is a one ingredient natural product that basically can last forever. Honey is also a great product to have on hand for short term and long term because it can also last forever. What about foods that contain flour? I like to buy flour already prepackaged in the number 10 cans and I bought them through the LDS or the Mormon church. The flour is already packaged to last for years and years and I was really glad that I had ordered it probably eight years ago because a few months ago we couldn't find flour in the store and I went to my stockpile, got out a can of the family food storage LDS flour, opened it up and at first it smelled a little bit like a tin can but I left it in the can and let it air out and within an hour or two, it was just like fresh flour from the store. It's a great product, it isn't very expensive, and the LDS Church online sells a lot of their foods. You don't have to be a member of their church to buy them, and they're very reasonable prices, they're top quality products, and they're packaged to last nearly forever. But for everyday pantry meals, maybe you'd rather have something like a pancake mix, that's not going to last as long as flour that's sealed in a number 10 can. So you can have short-term, long-term flour in your food storage pantry with a combination of these types of ingredients. I love shredded cheese, but it just can't last forever. You can store it in your refrigerator. You can even extend the life of some of it by putting it in the freezer, but it's still not going to last forever. I stocked up on the Augustin Farms Cheese Blend Powder. It has a shelf life of about 10 years. Probably it would last longer in your long-term pantry. You just need to add water and you can make cheese sauces, spreadable cheese, cheese dips, and even cheese crackers. It comes with directions on the back of the label. I ordered several cans of the Cheese Blend Powder and a lot of macaroni, which I stored in a bucket. So in my everyday pantry, I have boxes of Kraft macaroni and cheese. And then in my long-term food storage, I have my cans of cheese powder and a bucket of macaroni. So in a long-term emergency or when I run out of other foods, I can open those up and still make macaroni and cheese. 
Will it taste as good as crab? Probably not. But will I be happy to have it when I'm hungry? Definitely. Rather than stocking up on spice blends, stock up on single ingredient spices. Salt, pepper, garlic powder. You can always mix them together and make a combination. Herbs and spices can tend to go stale, but that doesn't mean that they aren't any good anymore. They've lost some of their luster. Just add a little bit more into your recipe to bring out the flavor that you're looking for. If you plan to repackage your food into long-term food storage, whether you're going to put it in canning jars, empty soda bottles, five gallon buckets, people have been asking me lately, how many oxygen absorbers do you use? And there is a guideline. 100 cc's for a 32 ounce jar, 300 cc's for a number 10 can or a gallon container, 1500 cc's for a five gallon container. If your container is somewhere in between, use the oxygen absorber designed for a larger amount. The more oxygen you remove from your stored foods, the longer your stored foods will last. That's how it works with food storage. You buy what you can afford, get some to eat today, some to put away, and then you need to rotate your foods and actually use it. Only stock up on foods that you know what they are, you know how to prepare them, and you're willing to eat them. That's how you have the best use of your food storage dollars and your pantry space. Food is getting more expensive and more scarce, so it's important that we make sure that we're always doing a little bit, setting things aside, getting more food, have for today, and put some away for tomorrow. It just makes sense to want to make sure that you have the things you need no matter what the future brings. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Learn more at alaskagranny.com and please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel. Teddy, stay out of Alaska Granny's prepping here. Teddy, that's not for you.